Day 192. Make a song bringer. And um, I'm pretty sure 192. I'm always interested in numbers because I'm such a geek. 192 minus 128 should be 64, right? Yeah. Whoa. That's 128 plus 64. Very special day today. Wow. Wow. Okay, um, so if you've been following along on the videos lately, yesterday I was working on rivers. And um, I got rivers and the sea done now. So there's a sea I know in this world. If I go, oh, maybe that's not it. Where the heck is this? Oh, it's, I think it's the other way. Oh, there's a river that goes, here is a river. So yeah, I got, some of these rivers are not quite perfect, right? So that little bridge, I'll have to figure out how to line those up like better. But um, that was a river. Here's a continuation of that river. Here we go. Here's the lakes I was talking about. So there's this, this lake here, this big old lake, very Zelda 1-esque lake. Um, I still haven't gotten the bridge going across the lake, so there should be a bridge right here which goes over to this level entrance. And I imagine this level entrance will look a little bit different because it maybe won't have trees. Maybe it'll just be sort of like a rocky island or something like that, but more and more the, the algorithms for the overworld are getting done and um, eventually they'll all see there. Here's kind of a mistake, like there really shouldn't be a, a cave entrance right there on top of the water. But uh, I think there might be need to be a path. Yeah, there should be a path going into the middle. This. So there should be a path over here, and there's not a path there either. But yeah, I'll get those done. But I'm going to take a break from doing... Because that code is really hard stuff. All the overworld stuff is just... It is tricky. Tricky stuff. So I'm going to focus on art today on today's stream. So... Um, yeah, I'm going to do the, I'm going to work on these, um, these trees. Cool. Okay, so yeah, um, I was taking Lighter Thief's suggestions. Lighter Thief showed me some, some great pixel art tutorials about how to create depth, and that's what kind of started the whole process of making these mountains, which had more depth. More thickness, if you will. You get the right angle for your game where the camera will be and you can imagine what kind of depth that will create for things. So if you look at these, especially this tree right here, this yellow tree looks really flat, especially here at the base. This this top looks all right. Same with these these greener trees. These tops look all right. Um, but the base could use a little bit of work. So I'm going to start with this tree here and just start making it more give it more depth by Changing how this base looks. What's up, Speedy Flip? Sweet, man. Thanks for saying that. Appreciate it. <laughs> What's up, Azarus? How are you guys doing today? How you doing, Speedy Flip? What's new, man? What are you What are you working on? What's your What's your thing? Yeah, already that's looking better. I think it can go a little bit more. Yeah, better. Yeah, I'm great. I'm great. I just I took a nap. I I'm kind of doing this crazy long cleanse actually, I'm trying to cleanse my brain of all the the bad things I've done over the years, basically smoking way too much weed. So yeah, I'm trying to cleanse. I'm doing a kind of a brain and heart and liver cleanse, and it's it should take like another 20 days or so to get it all done. But basically drinking some herbs and eating really good foods and things like that. So I get tired a lot. So I'm having to take all these naps and stuff, but other than that, I'm great.
that. Yeah, that, so that just turned that this whole tree into a lot more, a lot better depth. But let's try, let's try that too. Maybe this. Oops. Yeah, there we go. It looks a little less spindly now. Okay, I like it. No, this is the this tree right here below it is actually the second frame of it. This is an animation. So let's let's I'm gonna duplicate. Well, actually, I'm gonna give it some shadow first. I'm gonna look over here at the opacity. I'm, I use this info window here on this this little palette over here to check opacities quickly. Why isn't that working? Oh, 22, 20% about. So I grab this shadow color, set my pen to 20% opaque. You can just draw in some shadows right on the same layer. Yeah, man, that just really fixed this whole tree. This looks 10 times better of a tree now. Yeah. Maybe this too. That looks alright. Okay. So yeah, I'm just gonna copy, copy and I'm gonna copy drag. So I'm holding down option. Oh wait. First I just do the this tool. I do option drag and I can drag a copy of it. And this what's great about this option drag is it just copies this straight up with the, with the layer. Oh, first I would need to delete. Okay, need that much of the tree, which is going to put me up to this pixel. Okay, it looks a little weird because I can tell the difference between those two opacities. So I'm going to go set this, my pen, to actually to 22%, which is what this is for that, just to get that shadow looking perfect. Okay. All right, tree number one done. Now, same thing with this. This these other two green trees, especially this middle one. This middle one looks great on top. I see a lot of depth. I can imagine that being a really a good tree. But at the bottom, it gives me a bit too much of a two D flat feeling. So I'm gonna mess with that first.
Hey, what's up? Oh, oh, sorry, I missed your 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 uh, chat here a second ago. You're working on a game called Two Terrains. Nice. Well, Speedy Flip, man, I can't wait to see some more about it. When you when you get some, when you want to start doing some promotion, start promoting right here. What's up, the lag script and PMC in the Grim Gary? Yes, exactly. That's why I'm fixing it. I'm fixing it. Yeah, so you should have seen this this other tree over here is already fixed. So that's what I'm doing. I'm fixing this 2D-ness to these trees. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It definitely had me feeling that way too. But it was only after... Lighter Thief showed me some great pixel art tutorials that I finally learned that stuff was looking a little bit too flat in Songbringer, so I finally had to to learn more. So I'm so glad I'm still doing art tutorials. It's really helping. Uh-huh. Yeah, I still think the tops need some work. Nice. Right on. Day two. Cool. Nice. So you have started promotion. Live streams are promotion. You got it. Yo, what's up, Vlad? Howdy. I'm thinking this could use... Some more stuff in the background here. That gives it a little more depth. Cool, right on. Hey, what's up, Tabby? What's up, y'all? Just working on some making these look a little more, more 3D. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, <laughs> right on. Cool. Which one was it? Was it was it before I even started making Songbringer or like Yeah, okay. Let me try that. Good thought. Good thought. Let's try a hue shift. So we're gonna shift this hue through the darker hues. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, my platformer game engine. Yeah, that's back in the day when I had to make money by selling game engines. And since Songbringer succeeded with Kickstarter, no more of that BS. Sweet, man. Yeah. Shift the green to blue? What? I thought this was going brighter right here. Green... 
I thought green, yellow, and the cyan were really bright sections of the hue, right? So wouldn't I go further towards the dark hues here? Because isn't where's the okay? Where is the exact middle? Where is the exact middle? Where's the brightest hue there is? Wouldn't it be? Let's see. So dark blue seems like the darkest hue to me. So wouldn't wouldn't right here around like maybe bright yellow be the sh the brightest hue? Right, but that I want to I want to I want to understand this. So like, let's see if the if the internet can answer that question. I guess that it's not an easy question to answer. Okay, so dark, blue is dark, purple's dark, red's dark to me. Yellow is light, green is light, cyan is light. Right? So if I'm right here at green, right? If I'm at this green color, whoops. Wouldn't I shift through? I guess if yellow, if you do consider yellow one of the brightest hues, then I guess I shouldn't be shifting towards yellow. But also cyan, I guess cyan is less bright than yellow. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's make it more green then to make it deeper. Go to about there. Yeah, that feels right. Okay, cool. As long as it feels right, we know we're, we're gonna get, we got the right idea it might be a little too much of a shift yeah just use the text boxes you're moving away from blue if you go to yellow yeah oh yeah Yeah, I mean, I, if I use the text boxes to change the brightness, I, we're, we're talking about the actual relative brightness of a hue. So it says it has nothing to do with these text boxes of brightness or saturation, any of these. It just has to do with the hue. So the hue in itself, this blue hue is darker than pretty much every other hue, kind of relatively. If you just eye it, right, the dark, there's darker hues, there's lighter hues. Okay, so that was a bit too much of a shift. How much did I shift by? That was 99 and I shifted it to 150. Okay, that's kind of a lot of a, a, sh a shift. All right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we all got reject art. Whoa. Dang. Let's turn on the fan and it blew like a ton of dust. <laughs> Is this the rejects? Hey, those aren't bad. I can see where you're going with those. Right on. Oh uh, yeah, a little too noisy. I think it may be more like, yeah, 120. Yeah, there, okay. It's giving a little more depth, I like it.
Yeah, I guess that's kind of. I guess it's kind of lucky of me because I'm a I'm a totally new artist. I guess I just kind of eyeballed it and somehow got a soft look to it from the get go. Right? Ah, cool, cool. Let's do that. Yeah. Okay, and I'm thinking also with these shot these deep shadows here, these ones also I'm gonna shift the hue. So we got 99 here, we'll go up to like 120. Maybe 119. Yeah, I could yeah, I could do that. I'll just do the select with the um select the color range. Weird, it didn't quite get a Let's do a fuzziness of like ten. What the heck's going on? Why isn't it getting these colors? Oh, yeah. Oh, I hear you. Definitely too saturated. Yeah, I hear you. Gives it more of a cartoon feel than you probably look like you're going for with your art style. But that's just my beginner's artistic eye. I could. This is. This has a lot of potential, though, to look really good with just some very s simple shifts. You've got amazingly good. You got really good depth going too. Like you, everything looks very nice in 3D. This looks awesome, man. Especially like these rocks. These rocks look great. All right, why isn't the color range working? Ah, screw it. I'm just doing it by hand. Oh, is it because... Am I not at 100%? Oh, it's a... This is going to help. I was drawing at 20% opacity. Yeah, of course. Cool, man. I never knew you were an artist. What, um, so that was from a few years ago. What's your game look like now? Are you still working on it? Did you finish it? Oh, Tappy, I did listen to that, um, I did check out that cool, um, that rad tutorial you showed me. Yeah, look at that. Yep. Looks beautiful. Nice. What's up, Taco? Yeah, that, uh, Blender tutorial, the Blender Guru color tutorial was really great. I learned a lot watching that one. Ah, okay.
okay. Yeah, uh, I know what you mean. That angle, the uh, the isometric angle, is quite. I think it's probably the most difficult of game angles. Like if you've got this, which is kind of more orthographic. There's a side scroller, which is the easiest. Like a platformer is just super easy graphics to do. And then you've got that one, the isometric, and that is the trickiest of all art perspectives. So I could see why it might have been a bit too much scope. Yeah, totally, man, totally. Yep, I'm, I keep on doing all my homework. Okay, so let's see if we can select all these colors cleanly. What's up with that? It keeps, is it selecting? Wait a minute. Is it supposed to do that? Why is it not quite selecting these colors right? It's like it's in fuzzy mode or something. Yeah, but I'm so used to using this tool and it's really great to be able to select all the same colors at once. You know? I mean, let's see if this even works. Yeah, the, ma the magic wand works. Usually this, this color one works great too though. I think I might have broken it somehow. There. Oh, really? No way. Oh, what? Oh, dude, Tappy. Oh, I never knew you could do that. That's so awesome. Oh, no way. This is the best tool ever. I don't got to futz with anything. Yes, high five. Man, seriously. So great. And you know what's great is it didn't change my color either. When you do the color selector thing, it changes your color. Yeah, high five. Dude, anybody that's watching the stream, what we just did, what I just learned was that you can use the magic wand tool. If you turn off contiguous, you can select a color and it selects all the same color on your whole document, which makes it super quick to go change everything. Yeah. Select, like Tappy says, selects every pixel the same value as the one you clicked. I'm going to find that invaluable. Okay, so let's shift this towards yellow. Maybe a max of, I'm thinking of maybe like 20 in general, but I'm going to go with what looks good. Yeah, that's pretty good there, 76, 8. And so, yeah, I'm coloring it in with the uh... Yeah, I think that was a little too much, actually. A little too much shift. I don't want to change it that much. So, I'm going to go... It was at, like, 99. So, maybe, like, more like 80... 80-something. 80 
Yeah. I just didn't, I didn't want to fill because I didn't want to fill all the other stuff on the whole screen. Because I kind of like how these bushes are already looking. What's up, T? Okay, so yeah, we have a little more warmth now in that hue shift. So there's more color depth in this tree now. One more thing, which would be really good, is to try color shifting this darkest bit of the um, of this. So this is going to shift more to red, right? So wait, hold on. This starts out at 27, so I really don't want to shift more than about 10. So that's 17. Nice. So wait, did it, ch I hope it didn't change my color. Yeah, 17, good, all right. There. Yeah, so yeah, that has a little bit more depth in that shadow now, too. Okay. Okay, so this this should look good. Um, I'm going to work on the base of this one, too, now. Yes, yes, yes. I highly agree with this, Teak. Yeah, if you, it's, if you want to do a Ludum Dare, it's a quick game type thing. You really got to, you got to be familiar with your game engine. Uh huh. Okay, so let's get these roots to have a little more depth. Oops. Oops. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I can show you rivers. Hey, what's up, Spymort? Yeah, so the rivers um, are mostly done. There's still a lot of algorithmic stuff I've got to finish because this is the this is where the uh, um, this is where it all comes, you know, comes together with its. The algorithms are tricky. Is what I'm saying. So here's a river, right? And here's a, a lake too. There's a big old lake surrounding some cool screen. So there should be a bridge right here, and I'll have to work on that later on tonight. So it's tricky stuff because it's like I'm procedurally generating every tile of this game. So that's what that's why this whole overworld is still a little messed up. There's a lot left to do. But I really love this lake. This lake is so cool. And there should be a bridge right here going over to, to right to this part of this screen here. So this is a lot like the lakes of, um, of Zelda. And then there is, let me see, there's, where's the sea? Oh yeah, so the ocean is to the, to the east on this one. Yeah, they do look like bubbles, but I kind of want that tree to look bubbly. But I'm going to do a totally new tile, I'm going to start a totally new tile set today. So it'll be more jungly. So this is, this will be tile set version 2. 
or just a second tile set that I can use for other screens. So yeah, so if you go all the way to the right in, the, in this uh, world, you've got the sea, which is kind of like mangroves. There's still frogs and stuff. So I'll probably put some mangrove trees and stuff here out in the water. Whoa! Fell off the world. Yeah. So they'll get better. You know, the, these um, algorithms, like, it took a while to get... This is the lake algorithm so far. I need to get some bridges being put in here with this bridge min, bridge max stuff. But here, the river algorithm has finally got finished and simplified and fixed out all the bugs and it creates bridges and stuff too, so that's cool. All right, compared to before, these overworld trees are looking a lot better. So I'm going <clears> to... <throat> <laughs> nice. Oh, uh, dude. You know what's so great about ha about these kind of art skills is if you have confidence as a, as a person, you can still make a game like this. It's only if you consider yourself to be a bad artist and or that or that bad art is bad in a sense. That's the only thing that can stop you from making a game with this kind of art. That's what I'm, what I'm saying is this kind of art works. There's there's games that are like this that are awesome to play. As long as it has good gameplay, it still is a good game. That's what I'm trying to say. So, <laughs> I love this. I love this. You could make a whole internet meme off of that guy. Seriously. Lava or volcanoes? Maybe. That's a cool idea. Because, yeah, I want to do a jungle... So maybe I should do volcanoes for the mountains. So yeah, this this um this world the brown area is going to be mountains or volcanoes or something. This darker green area is like a darker jungle and this lighter green area is a lighter jungle. So, and then I also want to have a, a little bit of desert too. Oh, it's 10 years old. Right on. I like it. <laughs> I can't wait. Okay, so this is ready to try these out in the game. Oh, wait, no, no, no. I want to do a little more depth in these trees. Snow Ice Zone? I was thinking there would actually be... Um, there would actually be a place where... Or a, a, a type of weather which would be snow. So, but this could be, actually, this could be cool to do a, a separate ice zone. <laughs> Although they annoy you. Oh, because they're too bright? Yeah. I know what you mean. You gotta, like, put on some, some glasses just to work, to see. <laughs> Although he closes his eyes. <laughs> and his funny nipples. Oh, that's great.
Yeah. I love it, Vlad. Nice. Oh, so you did, did you, did you redo your website? This looks, oh, oh, nice. Yeah. I love pixel art. <laughs> uh. Nice, Sheila Booth ref. Yeah, I heard about Rezd. So you're so what is um is uh, April your release goal then or something for the game? You want to like release it, Rez, or are you like um planning a beta launch that day or something? Nice work. Nice. Oh, cool. Good for you. Nice. How much does it cost to do an exhibit there? Is it really expensive? Okay, let's see how these trees look in the game when they animate. <laughs> oh that's great this text right here this writing reminds me of toe jam and earl so much is that a potato <laughs> oh man that's great Ah, okay. That's pretty reasonable, actually. I think, man, like GDC is super expensive. I think it's like tw two grand just to get your booth, the small, smallest booth you can get. I don't know. I could be totally wrong on those numbers. Okay, let's see how this looks in the game with these new trees. And then we'll start a totally new tile set, the jungle. Need some trees. Here we go. Here's some trees. Yeah, they're definitely looking better. Just a little more depth. A little more actual depth and a little more visual or color depth to both of those. So that's, I'm going to call that better for sure. So cool. It is a potato. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Oh, Eurogamer is is rezzed too? Okay. Ah. Alright, yeah, let's start. I'm gonna start drawing a jungle now. So the jungle floor is gonna have maybe a different color floor. I need a screen to go to that would look good. Sweet. Supported by Sega. Okay, let's find a screen on this overworld that would be a good one. It has a lot of vegetation on it. So just too mountainous. Too open. Too watery. Where's the trees? Whoops. Guess we're going downstairs. Talk to this dude. What do you gotta say? Nothing to say? Nothing to sell? What's up, man? Seriously. Uh, I used to have screens that were mostly trees. Now it's like there's mostly mountains. Probably because I... I was so stoked to have mountains. Alright, this one could do. Alright, so if I'm on this screen, I want to kind of imagine what this would look like. I just noticed there's no shadow underneath these darker bushes right there. Let me fix that really quick. I know. In God mode, he goes so fast he can't get, he doesn't get collided with the edge of the screen. He can just run right off the screen. This will make these bushes look better. Oh, these two. I know, right? Too many mountains, for sure. Come on! Here we go. <laughs> oh man, I really want to see this one animated. 
<laughs> oh, I finally see the stream. Nice. <laughs> oh. So, he's so free. Can you imagine if we all pissed into the air and then breathed it? Or we all just pissed right in our own mouths? I don't even want to imagine that. Yeah, okay, there. That makes those bushes look a little bit better. Okay, yeah, next step, let's make this look more jungly. So I want to have some jungle trees, some vines, some jungle bushes, and the mountains can stay mostly the same. It'll probably need some kind of ju a better jungle ground texture too. Man, uh, do I want to do it with these sprites? Or I mean, see I got all these slices. These blue things create slices and I put everything in one document. So I'm debating, should I put this all in one document or many documents? Because it is really nice to be able to work on all this art you know, all in one document. So yeah, I'll, I'll do the extra work to make this all one document. Okay. Get a drink of water. All right, I need some inspiration. Jungle. Jungle inspiration. Whoa. These are some good images. It's like very grassy. Mmm, this is gonna be fun to make. Palm trees. But I like this really mossy forest. This isn't even a jungle really, this is more of a forest with tons of moss.
Oh, this is that cave. This is that cave. <laughs> no, I don't think this is the cave I was thinking of in Vietnam. Maybe it is. There's a cave like this in Vietnam I've heard of. Ooh, waterfall. I can't wait to do the waterfall. But first I want to do this like more basic art for the jungle. Yeah, some Angkor Wat style trees and roots. I love Angkor, Angkor Wat style. Oh, this is Sukhothai. Yes! Awesome! Here's sort of an art, art and out version. Okay, so I'm thinking ferns and sort of like, let's start with the bushes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's enough bushes, I guess, for now. Cool, so I'm turning all these all into layer based slices. This allows me to draw all this art on one document and export it real easily.
Bush 111. So this one's going to be Jungle Bush. Zero, zero. Doesn't it? <laughs> All right, cool. Now we're finally going to draw. Wait, I had something that. Yeah. I remapped this one key to turn off on and off slices. I really do like this little green color I got there, so I'm going to try and use that. And make, um, first of all, I'll make sort of a fern. Hey, what's up now? Welcome to the stream, man. I'm just drawing some, some brand new overworld art. I'm going to do sort of a jungle look. Um, this might take some time, realizing how long it takes. Forgot how long it takes to make art. A lot of art. So this is going to be a whole new sort of theme. Yes, the jungle. Yeah, I was just looking at some images there a second ago. I was looking here on online at all these kind of reference images, just getting some ideas for what plants to really look like in the jungle. And now I'm just kind of drawing something based on that. Maybe sort of like one of these like banana leaves or something. I was going to do a fern, but now it's sort of turned into a banana leaf.
Yo, what's up, Tefen? Howdy, man. Just working on some new art. Jungle art. Welcome to the jungle. Yes, definitely. I have heard of it. Pretty amazing story, right? Yep, yeah, I played it a lot myself. I played it a lot. Back when it was first coming out, like... When was that? 2011? Something? I had my, my base really, really good. I was defending so many, so many tracks so well and then finally I got so I was like man I'm spending so much time playing this game and I finally just deleted it oh I mean like just the fact that they're making like a million dollars a day or something awesome like that that story is pretty inspiring Yeah, I bet you it's gotten a lot better since I played it all those years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's the game that inspired me to make a free game too, and I realized you kind of re you really got to have a good monetization strategy if you're going to have a free game. You still play Candy Crush Saga? Nice. Yeah, that's another one that I'll, um, whoa, 790 plus? Dang. That's some advanced candy crushing. <laughs> nice there you go that is a quite a quite an accomplishment i heard i heard the candy crush gets really hard really fast Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know, totally. That's that's also the lesson I learned when making my game Hero Bash, is that I don't, I don't really hold, I don't really like the whole freemium 
model that much. We made this game based on the freemium model because that's like this. We made this game right when Candy Crush and Clash of Clans was coming out, and they were kind of our inspirations, our models. We were like, oh my gosh, we're gonna be millionaires because they they were, but we didn't we didn't really nail our strategy down. We didn't have any you know we didn't do any indie marketing. We're just two guys, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's what makes that's what makes those freemium games so successful is you don't need to pay, but there's a strong reason to pay. Yeah. I confess, I think I spent like $10 on Clash of Clans. I spent $5 once. Five That's that's an interesting thing to note is that, that back when I was playing at least, the $5 was the minimum you could pay. What's the minimum? on um, Clash of Clans right now. Is it still five bucks? Or what, I don't even know what what, uh, do, what currency you're on, Nano. Oh, it's still five, yeah. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Yeah. World of Tanks. Is is Clash of Clans still like number one or number two on um on the on the iOS app store? Yeah, totally. I do, I do love League of Legends style, and that's what we tried to model. Yeah, we tried to model that same strategy with Hero Bash, and it didn't work for us. But it's probably because we didn't have enough players. Yeah, Team Fortress. Wow. How does how is Heroes of the Storm doing it? It's even more successful? Wow. I've been noticing all their ads on YouTube all the time. Okay, let's we got one plant done. It's looking out I mean, I don't know if this is exactly what I wanted to create here, but it's a yeah, yeah. We'll start with that. Uh-huh, yeah. Shortening the grind time. That's what makes it so much so desirable. It looks like a bird. <laughs> yeah, it kinda does.
All right, here's the function where it's creating bushes. And I'm going to ha hack in some code here to give it a jungle bush only if it's the first entity. The highest town hall is 10? Whoa! Wow, I think... Gosh, I think the highest one was like 4 or 5 when I played it. Song Rear's rated R for Bush. <laughs> uh, hey, what's up, B Woogie? Okay, I don't even know if the screen has one of these kind of bushes. There, it does. It looks it looks really deserty actually. I think I want to see that shifted more to the green hue. Man, this is going to take a while to do this whole new tile set. But, you know, once I get it down and kind of get the right right idea for the look and everything, it'll be cool. Wow. Yeah, I remember those those max town halls that you can you can, can you you can still go look at other people's stuff, right? I remember fighting like the best guys on the whole game and they do their town halls were so <sighs> Everything, even their walls were maxed out. Crack, 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 crack. Okay, 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 okay. I don't know if I like it. I don't know if I like it yet, but... Okay, I want to see a viney tree. I'm going to get... I'm going to start with the tree first, for next. Next thing, tree. Whoops. Clan wars. Wars between clans? I don't think there was. No, I don't think there was clan wars. Arcane, what's up? Actually, it doesn't even, it doesn't go either direction. It, it appears instantly on the whole screen. 
Yeah, I remember it had clans, but it didn't... I don't know if it had clan wars. Is there any way to get texture packer to output is solid as true if the transparent pixels are 100% invisible? Uh, Azarus, what do you mean by is solid? I mean, I know that it does, it has heuristics that it does, it uses to. Like, like, here's one that's semi-transparent right there. Where does it do? Here's your heurist heuristics. Oh, is solid? Really? I don't even know if it, I know. Wow, does it have that? I, I had not, no knowledge that it even had that feature. Where, did, where does it even do that? Wow, I don't know. I don't know. I've, I I have no idea. I didn't, I didn't even know it had that. Yeah, it's seriously. It's it just instantly appears fully at the top and fully at the bottom. It's just one sprite. Uh, yeah, arcane. It puts it so. That's what it, it packs it all into a texture. So our, that's what we're talking about right here. It's texture packer. So what this does is it takes all these individual ping files, like here's one ping file, right? It takes, and I've exported all these ping files separately. I mean, these are these are just some of the sprites in the game so far. So all these individual ping files get packed into one single texture. See, if I zoom out, you can see this is a 1,000 by 2,000 pixel single file, right? It exports this out to the game as a single file, but it also exports this property list file. And this property list file is used later by your game engine to go and read. It reads back this whole texture and then sets the, okay, it says, okay, this p particular region right there, these pixels are, and then it's in this texture, these pixels right here are a sprite frame. So you can you can change the the actual sprite frame that you're the actual amount of the texture that you're using to get just a single sprite frame. So hope that makes sense. Basically, the game engine handles all, all that for you usually. Oh, you wrote your own exporter. Oh, man, I don't know. That's cool. I don't know they had a. You can do your own exporter. Hmm. 
Yeah, man, I wish I could help you out on this one, Asnerus, but I don't know. It sounds like you got a lot more knowledge of it already than I do. So, sorry I can't help you more on that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Have I ever participated in a game jam? Yeah, I made a game with, um... Robot Loves Kitty. You guys have heard of Robot Loves Kitty, right? They make Legend of Dungeon, and now they're making Upsilon Circuit. Legend of Dungeon is their game that's, uh... It's like Dungeon Crawler that has... It's made in Unity, and it looks like this. It's a pretty rad game. I definitely definitely recommend owning it. Um, and then they're making this new one, Upsilon Circuit, that um, what's what the the cool concept about Upsilon Circuit is you can only play it, you can only die once. If you ever die in this game, Upsilon Circuit, you can never play it again. That's the concept of the game. It's pretty rad, right? So anyways, yeah, I did a game jam with them. We made this game called Werewolf Vampire. It was fun. We did it in like two days. Yeah, I know. Me too. Yep. I'm that old too, man. Those are the games I played growing up. Okay. Oh yeah, I was going to draw a tree. I know, I hope you get a practice round. There's, There better be some kind of practice round. No, you can't pay for it again. It's a free-to-play game. There's no way to ever play it again if, you've, if you're dead. But you can spectate. So, like, you can watch other people die or whatever. <laughs> so you can spectate forever, but you can never, ever play it. You can never be an active character in that game if you die. So, pretty... I think it's a rad concept myself. Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea how that works. I don't know. I haven't asked him. You can try asking Robot. He's the coder. Oh, yeah. What's up, GNZ CEO? Yeah, man. It's been a long time. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But I know they got videos and everything that are kind of, they're showing. They were kind of keeping it hush hush at first, but they, I know they've showed it. They showed it off at South by Southwest, um, and a couple other. Here it is. Yeah, here, check it out. Kotaku did an article. If you die in this game, you can never play again ever. That's the concept. So, but yeah, it's UpsilonCircuit.com. I know he's got, I know he's got videos and everything, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Legend of Dungeons, great. Right? <laughs> yeah. What's up, Lee? L Leiva? Sorry, man. I don't know how to say your name. But yeah, we were talking about Upsilon Circuit. I thought I think you just saw me point out the link there, but we get it for you again.
It's not one play per person, it's one death per person. So if you keep, if you stay alive, you can keep playing it forever. But if you die, you can never play again. You can only spectate. Yeah, I know. So it makes it so interesting, right? Okay, these are called tree two. This is a bush tree. Or jungle tree. Jungle tree. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how they do it or, or how, how they will try and force it or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Can I run when you have some? Yeah, totally. It's not looking that great right now, but... This is what it. Let me uh, let me turn off God mode, so you can actually see what the game is like instead of it. Instead of me running around in God mode, which is not really the, the game. So yeah, you've seen it. You saw it a long time ago, but now there's all these new swords. These swords are pretty cool. They they do this. Um, if I can even hit anybody, these guys are hard to hit. Because they burrow underground. There we go. Yes, yeah, so this is the lightning sword. It does some crazy damage that uh, it'll strike the enemy that, that it strikes. And then it also strikes a random place on the screen. Yeah, man, there's so many things you haven't seen. There's the cactus. So you can eat cactuses. And this gives you psychedelic powers. You can see secret walls and stuff. There's tons of new enemies. Um, I don't think you've even seen the overworld in a long time. Let's go to the overworld for a second. Ah. Thanks. Yeah, so the so that's the overworld, right? You run around the it's a lot like Zelda One. You just run around your overworld looking for levels, secrets, that kind of stuff. Um, here is what it kind of like the dungeons look like. Oh. <laughs> trapped inside this room I can't I can't really show you oh I'm not trapped oh spiders oh the spiders are getting stuck inside their sack <laughs> oh so there's supposed to be spiders coming out of that sack right there look at Jib he's going crazy he's like items I found so many items <laughs> I've never seen him do that before Scanner drones, sweet. Yeah, so you kind of get the feel, you get the the feeling for what the game's sort of like. <clears throat> you can never play Song Reader again. <laughs> you want white water rafting? That could work. Okay, so anyways, I want to draw some more jungly trees. That was I did I finish this? Probably not. Jungle tree zero one. Thank you. It's getting there. There's about five more months left of development, and I'm working on the overworld a lot this week. So I'm trying out some new art styles. I want to get um the algorithm working a little bit better so it creates better worlds
And then, then probably next week I'll work on more enemies. Yeah, thanks, Vlad. It's true. You can order it on Songbringer, and you, that gets you your name in the credits, too, and on the, the main menu. How did I get this far by myself? You can watch every day on YouTube. I just I just work every day. I work 10 to 12 hours a day. And um, that's, you know, it takes time to do the music and the art and the, the, the programming and everything. But if, you know, if you work hard enough and long enough, uh, one person can accomplish this. How much C++ experience do I have? About 20 years, 22 more, yeah, 20 plus years now. So I have a, my, my greatest strength is my programming. My second greatest strength is my music. So we, art is my weak spot. I'm still learning art. Okay, cool. We got these jungle, these new slices lined up. I want to see some vines. Let's get some more inspiration. Will I be your teacher? I think that is a question you can answer yourself. That's what I do these live streams for. I'm here to teach and to inspire. So if you want to be if you want me to be your teacher, all you got to do is watch these live streams or check out my YouTube channel and I will be your indirect teacher. Which one? Which one are you talking about? The Coco Studio X tutorial or the... Anyways, the Coco Studio X tutorial, no, it's not totally up to date. But it is uh, it is up to date as far as Coco Studio X 3.0 goes, so that it is is basically up to date. So um, and then the art tutorial, I guess it can't go out of date. So yeah. All right, Vlad, see you, man. Yeah, this is mostly up to date, mostly. There's if if there's anything wrong with it, it's only a a line or two of code here and there because it's Coco Studio X 3.0 ish. And 3.7, 3.6, all the all the recent releases are not that much different. Yeah, I want to do some more leaves like this. And some dark, in fact. I'm going to grab these colors. I love these colors. Why do I stand? Because it's better for my spine. What is it at the top of these? Oh, okay. So there's like these, yeah, these like fan, more fan-like leaves.
What's up, Ted dude? Do I have any books to recommend for this sort of game programming? Uh, this really depends on what game engine, first of all, you want to use. Because what, and, and that, I think of it this way, right? First of all, you need to pick a game engine. And the game engine will determine what language you want to use. And what determines what game engine you want to use is, first of all, what you're attracted to, what you like, right? If you like 3D games, you're probably going to want to use something like Unity or Unreal or some other great 3D engine like that. If you like 2D games, you might want to go with some other type of 2D-ish game engine. Um, and also, it really depends on what platforms you want to be releasing your game on, right? If you want to go cross-platform, you want to be on as many platforms as you can, you got to use the cross-platform game engine. So, um, well, if you want to do 2D, um, I would highly recommend Coco's 2DX. That's the one I use. And it's cross-platform, you know? So you write your game code once in C++, and then um, you can publish to any any one of the platforms it supports, which is Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, Android, all those. But it's not for beginners. If you don't know C++ already, then Coco Studio X is kind of a little bit difficult to use. So if you um, if you're brand new to game programming, I would highly recommend something more like Game Maker. So it depends on you. It depends on what game kind of what kind of game you want to make. So. So yeah, if you maybe get a little more specific, I could try and help you a little further. All right, man, cool, good luck. All right, cool. Well, all right. Well, if you already if you want to go for C++, <laughs> HTML master race. Nice one. What's up, Lost in Bay? If you do want to go with C++, I highly recommend that as a language to to end up with. Um, and if you're going to start with C++, I highly recommend learning C first. And uh, here's a good book on learning C. It's um, C learn code the hard way. So this is a good way to go. C and then C++. Yeah, HTML, HTML is kind of becoming the programming language of the, well, HTML and JavaScript is becoming the language of the future a little bit. But I'm going to stick with my good old C++. Looking at these branches, all these vines entangled over here, try and create a tree like that with these sort of fan like leaves on the top. Lots of moss on these trees. Cool. Yeah, see there you go. C sharp is even is even higher level. It's a great language. Some people like Java. It all kind of depends on you and your situation and what you want to end up with and the goals for your game and all of that.
All right, Tabby, good night, man. Sleep tight. Good night, you guys. Enjoy. Yeah. Yeah, of all these languages, C++ is a little is a little bit lower level and and that means that it's more like I I say this a lot, but it's a lot like driving an an automatic transmission car versus driving a manual transmission car. The the automatic transmission car is like Visual Basic or C# -sharp or Java or PHP. All of these are higher level and they're more automatic in the sense that they do more things for you. And when you're driving an automatic car, it's very easy. That's its advantage. Now, but the, the advantage of driving the manual transmission car is that you can do way more tricks and cool stuff. Like, like you can shift your car into neutral and, and when you're going over some gravel, which is a good thing. You know, and basically, basically you can do some really wicked awesome stuff with C++. But it is more tricky to learn. A little bit more tricky. It takes a little bit more time. It's because it's got two special characters in the name. <laughs> That's one way of putting it, right? Pointers, yep. Pointers are a big part of what makes C and C++ C++ a difficult thing to learn at first, for especially for beginners. So That's why I highly recommend learning C first, because C, you have to master pointers to understand it. And once you, it, pointers are really simple. They're just the address of another variable in memory. That's all it is. And when you learn how to work with pointers, you've kind of learned a really, really important thing. But it's also something you're never going to use in v Visual Basic, C Sharp, or Java. None of these have pointers, to my knowledge. Maybe they do. Yeah, references are like, references are rad. References are super rad, and they were introduced in C++. References give you the power of a pointer, right, with without having to dereference it. This couldn't turn out to be a cool tree. <laughs> That's awesome, R2. That's cool, man. I respect that. Probably is because you learned C. Yeah. Well, yeah. In general, that's kind of probably just a bad thing to do right there. But there may be a specific case where this is okay. That's what's so that's what's so flexible about C and C++ is that you could do that if you wanted to. And there may be a case where that's the right thing to do.
Wait, so Visual Basic does have pointers? No way. <laughs> there you go. No, see, there's really no one perfect language. You know, I mean, and maybe it's, it's on an individual case. There is, right? For There's no general language that's best for everybody, but there is a perfect language for you. And for you, it's Java. That's awesome. It's it's great that you know that. You know what I mean? And in essence, you you may never ever have to learn another language. Java is pretty much here to stay. I mean, some people say it's on its way out, but it's still widely used in in Android development, so I don't know, that's debatable. So anyways, This is kind of it. I want to get. I want to make it more green and hairy. Oh. Oh yeah, that's right. I remember they were saying that. Now you can do that. Yeah. Yes, exactly, exactly. Somebody shared a really great article on this the other. I think it was Vlad actually. I saved it in my list of like fun stuff. I would I have this folder in my game folder called current and it's just a bunch of like URLs and stuff. Here it is. Catching up is irrelevant. So yeah, you never have to catch up to other people and their languages or whatever. Catching up is completely irrelevant. Oh, oh, JavaScript. Oh, well, there you go. It is. JavaScript is very powerful and popular. It is tricky, and it's, well, I mean, the older versions of it are tricky. You really got to understand the, the, the scope of variables in JavaScript. And you have to really understand what the heck a, an a enclosure is, or is it, you know, a closure. Right, exactly, yeah. Wow, there are pointers in Visual Basic? That's tripping me out. Yeah, well, speed. Yeah, speed's a big part of it. Part of my reason why I choose C++, but... Also, portability is very, very important to me. I like that I can compile C++ into a binary format and run it on Java or on, on Android. You know, I can run it on a lot of things. Yeah, totally right. I don't. I don't, see. I don't. I'm not sure. I trust Swift. It's you know right now it's only on Mac. I know they open sourced it, but how many years is it going to take for them to be able to run Swift on an Android device? But I haven't heard of. I haven't really checked out Rust or or Go myself. Yes. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, totally. Good 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 insight here, Lunar Melt. It's true. C C++ is hard because you can do things so many different ways. It's true. That's why you really got to you just learn when you do learn C++, you got to learn really it helps to learn how things are done already, you know, like you can look at other people's code to kind of see, oh, here's how you might implement this. 
And once you code it enough, then you can kind of pick your way that you would do that. And then, you know, and then you get into things like best practices and you can figure out that there really are some best ways to do things. It kind of looks like some viney tree, right? Yeah, totally. Robotics? Yeah. Because robotics are so important to get right. Whoa, I don't know. Oh, C, yeah, definitely. C and C++ will probably pretty much be here. I would almost guess that they'll be here 100 years from now. You know, they're going to be here for a long, long time because the people that do use it are writing some of the most important pieces of code out there. Uh-huh, right. Yeah. Nice. What's up, Harajad? Yeah. I haven't really explored Rust or Go or not even really Swift either. So does it run type inference? Very nice. C bindings, huh? Does it compile? Or does it does it compile with a compiler or does it compile at run or at runtime? The runtime compiled? Ah. Oh, wow. Wow. I didn't know there was a Swift 2.0, which changed a lot. Yeah? Cool. Yeah, totally right. And what's great about these new languages is that they also sometimes can improve other languages, like... I think I think the C++ gods were like, oh my god, there's all these, there's all these new languages that are coming out that have cool features. Why don't we add some better features to C++? And finally they made C++11, which has some of the most awesome additions ever. Okay, so now let's do some um some like broad leafy stuff on top of this thing here. Why no external monitors for me? I wish I had an external monitor. I just don't have any. I only have one computer. What? Wow. Right on, T.
All right, good night. Sleep tight. Is there any faster way to generate those trees? I wish. Yeah, there there is. Yeah, I could procedurally generate all of these trees, but um, procedurally generated graphics is kind of difficult. Like, I would have to think of a way to create an algorithm that would do all this art. And so, not really. Not. <laughs> I wish. I know, right? It's, I'm, I've been drawing this one tree forever, right? Oh, wow. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah, those are fundamental things. If you don't understand those, it's like, it would be really hard to do some code. All right, good night, T. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, some things are. Like, this tree definitely has taken me longer than these these trees took. Because these trees, I don't know, I just they're a lot easier, right? There's less less color going on. But, um... <laughs> no, no, not really. I mean, I would, be, I would be distracted doing something else if I wasn't distracted doing the chat, so... No worries. I really, I really love the chat. I love you guys. Seriously. I love you guys. No, it's, re it's really, really cool to be able to chat with you guys because my girlfriend doesn't understand this stuff. She looks at my screen, or my fiance, I should say now. She looks at the screen and goes, gibberish, gibberish, gibberish. Why are you typing all this gibberish? So it's really cool to be able to relate people that get it. You guys get it. <laughs> yeah 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 it's pretty rad it's cool to be understood And what's cool is you guys, I understand you guys too. So it's a two-way thing. We have a we have a, a quasi relationship going. A relationship without the entanglements. How nice is that? <laughs> Gibberish plus plus. <laughs> Is it like brain fuck? One of the most confusing languages ever. Wait, where where's some good examples of this language?
Look at that. Okay, maybe this language is more simple than I was thinking. What's the really, really confusing one? Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's it's taking long since the first one. Yeah. All right, see you, T. Exactly. When did I learn how to code? Man, this was over twenty years ago in the nineties. I learned C plus. I learned C first, and then I learned C plus plus. A relationship without reference. I'm trying to think of that from a programming perspective. Right, doesn't it? There's another language out there that's that's like so confusing. It's like worse than Perl. I didn't I didn't really mean it, Perl. I like you, Perl. No, I don't actually like Perl. Sorry, Perl. Assembly is definitely tricky. Move AX 10, jump to, or no, it's just jump, jump 30. <laughs> you love Pearl, right on, right on. Yeah, I know, assembly. I guess the, the benefit of using assembly versus machine code is that assembly can compile into different bytes depending on what processor you're using. Also called a rave. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> okay, so if I were to do some shadow coming off of these branches, let's get some shadow. Come on, shadow. Nice, right on. I think I've always been confused by Perl because I, I looked right at just at the regular expression part of it. And that always confused me because I, when I was first started coding, I was like, I didn't understand regular expressions for, for Jack. Yeah, see, it's not so, it's not so bad. It's almost like PHP. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, regex is hard, right? I don't really understand regex that much. I mean, I kind of, every time I brush up my regex knowledge, I kind of feel like I get it, and then I just don't after a while. Oh, see there? There's some regex splitting by the space. Here's one. This is this is what always confused me about Perl. I guess it's just the regex part. Yeah, everything else is pretty simple. Okay, okay, Perl, we're friends again.
<laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. I have a problem that I can solve with regu regular expressions. Now I have two problems. Totally. Let me debug my debug. Come to me. Load. Loadeth the data. Oh, it worked. Free online tree generator. Okay, I want um I want some broad well not broad, I want I want more spine like well this is the closest sort of this leaf and no flowers. Maybe that one. Draw the tree. Ugh. Wow. That's not that bad. Okay, let's try let's try that leaf. Oh wait, it can do multiple different kinds. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah, that's the part. That's that's the part of Vim that I don't understand either. It's like, man, I got to use regu regu regular expressions for searching. Oh no. I didn't change. Generating tree. Oh. Yeah. This is cool. I mean, this is really neat. Oh, here you got all these options and stuff. This is totally neat, but I got I got my own style that I want to do here with this art. Okay, I'm kind of getting tired of drawing this tree. <laughs> right after, right after you trying to help me. Okay, anyways, um, I want to see what it looks like in the game so far. Let's get a little bit of shadow. And let's make it look more, give it some more depth. Okay, okay. Let's see what it looks like. It's 
kind of weak at the top, but. We'll, get, we'll roll with it for now. Whoops. All right, I think that took like over an hour, but anyways, the next ones will go faster if I like the way this is kind of looking. I'd still like to do some more detail on these branches, maybe a few more branches in the background to give it some more depth, but anyways. Jungle art is harder than regular art so far. Or maybe that's just my first time doing one of them. Okay, let's hack it in. Tree tile, here it is. So I'm just gonna hack it in. So the first tree is always this jungle tree. Later on that will depend on the style of the current map. Yeah, so far it has been. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nice one, dude. Nice. I didn't know the Grim Gary's a rapper, too. Oh, yeah. They look pretty good right here. They're not really matching these other trees, of course, but and they they look the the grass on top of this tree looks too spindly, like it needs more thickness and depth. But if all of the art was kind of converted over something like this, it needs it needs some vines too. Some vines hanging down would really help. Not as bad as I thought it would be. Hmm. Huh. What's the burning thing in the middle? Oh, it's your bike. Yeah, you crash your bike at the very first scene of the game. So you start out on your ship, and I can go to the ship here if I, I can go back to the ship. Um, but yeah, so you, you're... You start out the game on your ship Songbringer, and that's that's this ship right here. And I've only got this room done so far, and this room done. So, but anyways, you start out here, and there's so to the right over here there'll be a hangar, and over to the left there'll be a like an observation bay, and then there's actually a stage too where you can play music. But anyways, um, yeah, so you start out the game, you take your bike to the planet's surface to look for cactuses because you need some more party supplies. 
and you crash your bike. But you have your teleport cube, you can get back to the ship. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna take a break. I need to take a break and think about this for a second. Think about where I wanna go with this art and stuff like that. So I'll come back and take another whack at it tonight and maybe try and, I'm gonna try and find a way to simplify this art to be able to make it faster because I got a long ways to go if I'm gonna take this whole screen and make a new art. So also, it also would really help to be able to organize this art a little bit more and have most of it on the same document. There's a few things that aren't on that document, so. I guess probably the easiest art I could do is a desert art. But I do want to do this jungle, so. Yeah, so that's it for today's video. <laughs> Nice. Play music like rock band? No, not quite like rock band. It's more like more like um, uh, sword and sorcery. Yeah. So you remember how in sword and sorcery? Well, I don't want to say in case nobody's played. Somebody's not played that game, but yeah. What's up, Doctor Rasm? Yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. Um, same time. I usually start around four p.m. Today I started a little bit later, but four p.m. Pacific time. And yeah, so if anybody just joined, this game is called Songbringer. It's coming out on Steam in about five months. And um, and then it's also coming out on iOS and um, Retro VGS. And you can support the project too right now. And you can even get your name in the credits and on the main menu if you pre-order it at songbringer.com. So that's my spiel. That's it for today. And um, yeah, we'll catch you guys next time.